Now we're going to talk about coronal mass ejections and coronal loops. Let's start with coronal loops because they're really neat things. And there are actually some uh, film footage on, um, on uh, the uh, internet that you can actually watch coronal loops in action. So here I have a picture of what coronal loops look like. Here is the surface of the sun. And notice these nice little loops that come up. Well, they're not little loops, they're huge. The Earth would just be a small little sphere right there in comparison to the loops. So they're way, way bigger than the Earth. And what happens is when the solar activity gets very high, the magnetic field lines, they sometimes loop way out of the surface of the sun pulling with it enormous quantities of matter that then rains back down to the sun. It almost looks like a rain of solar material that falls back to the sun. And that can go on for hours and hours and hours until the loops sink back down into the surface of the sun. So these coronal loops, they, they occur during periods of very high solar activity. And they're beautiful things to see. So, you know, if you ever want to see this, it's worth your time. Go to the internet type in coronal loop rain or something like that and you'll see some amazing videos of this in action. Another amazing thing that happens sometimes during high solar activity is that sometimes we have what we call coronal mass ejections. Huge blobs of matter from the corona region. Remember the corona goes out for millions of kilometers around the sun. But sometimes some of the regions on, around the corona get superheated to very high temperatures and because of the magnetic activity sometimes they get blasted out into space at very high velocities, higher than the escape velocity of the sun and they go streaming out. As they stream out, they form these big blobs of material that are in circular motion. Of course, whenever you have material that's in circular motion, since they're made out of electrons and protons, they create very strong magnetic fields. Now notice, if they don't approach the Earth, some amazing things can happen. And sometimes not so pleasant things can happen. So let's imagine here that this is the Earth, and this is the magnetic field around the Earth that protects us from the solar wind. But what happens when we have this huge coronal mass ejection streaming out towards the Earth? It usually gets there in a matter of a few days after it's been ejected from the Sun. Let's say that this is the North Pole and this is the South Pole, so that the magnetic field lines are in this direction right here. And we have this huge blob of, of ionized gas reaching the Earth, approaching the Earth like this. Now, two things can happen. One thing is that the magnetic field caused by, by uh, the, the uh, circulating mass of charged particles, if the magnetic fields that loop around this mass are in the same direction as the magnetic fields of the Earth, we're probably okay. What happens then is it just will bounce into the magnetic field and the magnetic field will protect us like a shield and cause the, the particles to be uh, kind of spliced away in two different directions. One, the negative charged particles will go one direction, the positive charged particles will go the other direction. When that happens, we usually see amazing aurora borealis near the north and the south pole from these particles that stream then in towards the polar regions of the Earth. But sometimes when a blob of ionized gas like this from a coronal mass ejection comes towards the Earth and the magnetic fields are in opposite direction to the fields of the Earth. When the fields then combine together, there will be a cancellation effect and the protection mechanism of the magnetic field of the Earth will be reduced at that moment and much of this material can slam into the Earth, can slam into the satellites into orbit and slam into the grids that are on the Earth, the power grids on the Earth and actually cause quite a bit of damage which occurs on occasion. So this is one of those cases where the interaction between the magnetic field caused by these coronal mass ejections will interact with the magnetic field of the Earth and actually have quite an impact on the Earth. Now, uh, <clears throat> so this again happens during phases of the sun where there's a lot of activity, where the magnetic field lines are going haywire around the sun during the height of the activity, and then when all this settles back down and the field lines fall back into place and the magnetic fields reverse direction on the sun, then the whole process starts over again, and then these events are much fewer and farther apart at that point.